Welcome to this comprehensive guide on merchandising transactions, a vital part of understanding how businesses operate. In this video, we will delve into the intricate details of merchandising activities, inventory systems, purchase and sale transactions, and the preparation of financial statements for merchandising companies. Whether you're a business owner, an accounting student, or just curious about how merchandise flows through a company, this video has something for you. Let's begin with the basics. Understanding the difference between merchandising and service activities. Merchandising versus service activities. When you run errands, you buy products and services from various local retailers. While you might focus solely on your purchases, the businesses you frequent are deeply involved in tracking sales, purchases, and costs. There are key differences between service companies and merchandising companies in how they handle transactions and what these mean for their financial statements. A service company provides intangible services to customers and does not hold inventory. Examples include lawyers, doctors, consultants, and accountants. Their financial transactions are relatively straightforward, involving customer deposits, billing after services, providing services, and processing payments. These activities are part of their operating cycle, the time it takes to use cash, provide services, and collect payment from customers. On the other hand, a merchandising company resells finished goods produced by manufacturers. Examples include Walmart, Macy's, and Home Depot. Their transactions involve purchasing merchandise, paying for it, storing inventory, selling merchandise, and collecting payments from customers. Their operating cycle starts with having cash, purchasing inventory, selling it, and collecting payment. This process is more complex and requires careful tracking of inventory and sales. Perpetual versus periodic inventory systems. Inventory management is crucial for merchandising companies, and they can use either perpetual or periodic inventory systems. A perpetual inventory system continuously updates inventory records for each purchase and sale. It provides real-time data on inventory levels, cost of goods sold, and gross profit. This system requires sophisticated software and accurate record keeping, but offers detailed insights and better control over inventory. Conversely, a periodic inventory system updates inventory records at the end of a period, such as monthly or annually. It is simpler and less expensive, but does not provide real-time data. Businesses using this system conduct physical inventory counts to determine ending inventory and cost of goods sold. While it's less complex, it can lead to discrepancies and less accurate inventory tracking, analyzing and recording merchandise purchases. Now, let's analyze and record transactions for merchandise purchases using the perpetual inventory system. When a retailer purchases merchandise, they can pay with cash or on credit. If paying with cash, the transaction involves a debit to merchandise inventory and a credit to cash. If the purchase is on credit, accounts payable is credited instead of cash. The merchandise inventory account includes all purchase costs, such as the cost of merchandise, shipping charges, insurance fees, taxes, and any other costs to get the products ready for sale. For instance, if a clothing store buys 50 pairs of jeans at $1.25 each and pays in cash, the entry would be debit, merchandise inventory, $1,250, credit, cash $1,250. If the store purchases on credit, the entry would be debit, merchandise inventory, $1,250, credit, accounts payable, $1,250, purchase discounts, returns, and allowances. Purchase discounts incentivize early payment by offering a reduced rate. For example, terms like 210 and 30 mean a 2% discount is available if payment is made within 10 days. Otherwise, the full amount is due in 30 days. If a retailer pays within the discount period, they record a reduction in merchandise inventory reflecting the discount. For instance, if a retailer buys goods worth $1,600 with terms 210 and 30 and pays within 10 days, they record debit, accounts payable $1,600, credit, merchandise inventory $32, 2% discount, credit cash $1,568. If they miss the discount period and pay after 30 days, the entry would be debit, 
Accounts payable $1,600. Credit, cash $1,600. Purchase returns and allowances occur when merchandise is unsatisfactory. A purchase return is when merchandise is returned for a full refund. A purchase allowance is when the merchandise is kept, but a partial refund is issued. These transactions reduce accounts payable or increase cash in merchandise inventory. For example, if a candle retailer returns 100 defective candles costing $1.150 and receives a $1.20 allowance for 50 incorrect candles, the entries would be debit. Accounts payable $1.150 return. Credit merchandise inventory $1.150. Debit accounts payable $1.20 allowance. Credit merchandise inventory $20. Sales transactions and discounts. Sales transactions can be for cash or credit. For cash sales, the entries are straightforward. Debit, cash, credit, sales. For credit sales, the entries involve accounts receivable. Debit, accounts receivable, credit, sales. Each sale also involves a cost of goods sold entry. Debit, cost of goods sold, credit, merchandise inventory. Sales discounts encourage early payment from customers. For example, terms 2 tenths N30 offer a 2% discount if payment is made within 10 days. If a customer pays within the discount period, the entry reflects the discount. For example, a $1,000 sale with 210 N30 terms and payment within 10 days would be recorded as debit, cash dollar, 980, debit, sales discounts, dollar 20, credit, accounts receivable, $1,000. Sales returns and allowances occur when customers are dissatisfied. A sales return is when merchandise is returned for a full refund. A sales allowance is when the customer keeps the merchandise but receives a partial refund. These transactions decrease accounts receivable or increase cash and sales. For example, if a customer returns merchandise worth $100 and receives a $1.20 allowance for kept goods, the entries would be debit, sales returns and allowances $100, credit, accounts receivable $100, debit, sales returns and allowances $1.20, Credit, accounts receivable $1.20. Freight in methods. Freight in costs are the transportation costs incurred to bring merchandise to a retailer. There are two common methods for recording these costs, FOB shipping point and FOB destination. In FOB shipping point, the buyer pays for transportation and the cost is added to merchandise inventory. Debit, merchandise inventory. Credit, cash or accounts payable. In FOB destination, the seller pays for transportation and the cost is recorded as a selling expense, debit, freight expense credit, cash or accounts payable. Multi-step and simple income statements. Merchandising companies prepare multi-step and simple income statements. The multi-step income statement provides detailed information by separating operating revenues and expenses from non-operating items, giving a clearer picture of financial performance. A multi-step income statement includes 1. Net sales, sales sales discounts, returns, and allowances. 2. Cost of goods sold, see YOGS. 3. Gross profit, net sales COGS. 4. Operating expenses, selling, general, and administrative expenses. 5. Operating income, gross profit, operating expenses. 6. Other revenues and expenses, interest taxes. 7. Net income, operating income, plus other revenues, other expenses. A simple income statement is more straightforward. Sales, less. Operating expenses. Net income. Understanding merchandising transactions from purchases and sales to freight costs and financial statements is crucial for managing a successful merchandising business. These activities not only affect day-to-day -day operations, but also impact the financial health and decision-making of the company. Whether you're running a small business or studying accounting, mastering these concepts will provide a solid foundation for your financial endeavors. Thank you for watching this detailed exploration of merchandising transactions. We hope this video has enhanced your understanding and provided valuable insights into the complexities of managing merchandise in a business. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more educational content. 
See you in the next video.